<laughs> ah, welcome. Hello, everyone. Hello. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow SEC Rough Riders, and welcome guests. Please consider me an ambassador from the previous century. <laughs> what he said is true. In December, I turned 75. Three quarters of a century passed already. And I'm already taking responsibility for the whole thing. <laughs> I'm the guy that knows. And I'd like to talk to you about the first 10%. I was born in 1942. So from 1942, to 1952, do you know what the, the prominent, in fact, the only medium for home entertainment was? Radio. Radio. <laughs> exactly so. Now, my brother and I were in love with radio shows. Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. I bet you never heard Tom Corbett's Space Cadet on the radio. The Lone Ranger. Have gun will travel. Well, I see a, a, a few gray heads in me here, so maybe this is sounding familiar. I see a nod or two. Yes, yes. Some of you have had other experiences with other media. Uh, my brother and I, my brother was two years younger. Uh, anybody have a sibling? <laughs> ah. Anybody have sibling rivalry? <laughs> yes, I have vivid memories of sitting on my brother's chest, my hands around his throat, <laughs> watching him turn the most gratifying shade of purple. <laughs> Somehow he survived. And I'm glad he did. He's my best friend today. Actually, he went on to become a rocket scientist. No kidding. He graduated from Washington University in St. Louis with a degree in astrophysics and immediately was hired by NASA to work on the Saturn V moon rocket. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> I usually tell people, well, he got the brains, I got the hair. <laughs> we had a wonderful childhood together. The first 10 years were particularly memorable in my, in my mind. Listening to each other tell stories in the bedroom we shared that night. We were doing, usually, Walt Disney characters. <laughs> Yeah, I could get Donald's tone of voice, but uh, the articulation was lacking. <laughs> well, I much prefer to play Goofy. <laughs> and Goofy had more interesting adventures, stupid ones, that made funny dreams at night. <clears throat> of course, not all of life was lived in the bedroom. We had a living room as well. And my parents would often have company. And for boys in their earliest years, there was nothing more exciting than a gunfight. And of course, Mick was especially good, my brother, at getting shot. I can remember one time when the, the new minister and his wife were visiting, and my brother ran into the living room and oh! <laughs> Sprawled out on the living room rug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It seemed like the, the most embarrassing things happened when there was company. <laughs> I remember once Mitt and I were sitting on the, the living room rug in the frog position. You remember? Do you remember being able to sit in the frog position? <laughs> with your knees in front of you and a foot on either side and your butt flat on the floor. Hi. 
the very thought of it these days makes <laughs> my flesh crawl. <laughs> anyway, we were sitting there in that position playing checkers. And I thought, ah, oh. my brother suddenly jumped three of my men and went to be a king. And I thought, this is a perfect time to use that new word I heard on the playground. So I reared back and in front of company said, well, you little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> what a reaction. That's exactly what I got. As well as lifted by the scruff of the neck, marched into the bathroom and told to lick the bar of soap. Oh. <laughs> well, I didn't know what it meant. I just knew it had impact. <laughs> Impact was all it took. <laughs> Radio. It was great in those days. I loved the evening programs when my parents joined us to listen to the radio and, and to hear my father's laughter. My father had a very tense life in those days. Couldn't find work. So to hear Jack Benny and Edgar Bergen, Charlie McCarthy, and W.C. Fields, and Fred Allen, he would burst into laughter. Fred Allen was a favorite of his. He was, he was wonderful. I can remember Allen's Alley was the name of his program. And he would, uh, he would give us all advice on Hollywood. You can take all the sincerity in Hollywood and put it in a flea's navel and still have room left over for two caraway seeds and an agent's heart. <laughs> as true today as it was then. <laughs> and Charlie McCarthy, do, do you remember, do, do you youngsters have any idea who Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy? Yes, yes, good. A couple of them. The rest of you learn and prepare. Charlie McCarthy was a wooden dummy, and Edgar Bergen was the ventriloquist. Now, no one seemed to question the value of a ventriloquist on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> and uh, we kids totally identified with Charlie. He was pre presented as a kid, supposedly 12 years old. <clears throat> So when, when W.C. Fields was in, do you know W.C. Fields? Oh, yeah. Google W.C. Fields. Go on YouTube and find this man. He was a genius. I cannot recommend him too high. My boy, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to see you sliced into a Venetian fly. was <laughs> his. <laughs> And Bergen, his ventriloquist, well, sometimes Charlie is his own west, or worst enemy. Not as long as I'm around. <laughs> yes, radio. Now, of course, there were pictures on the radio, weren't there? Yes, there were. And where did those pictures come from? Our imaginations. Let me show you a list. These are the radio programs that were presented weekly from the 20s into the 50s. The period of America's imaginary entertainment. Huh. I submit to you that we are poorer today for the lack of these inspirations to our imagination. Something that does not happen on television. Now, of course, my brother and I were fond of making voices, and we discovered the dirt. This is a dirt. The moment of its discovery, it went dirt, 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 dirt. <laughs> so the dirt was useful to us for repeating the cartoons that we saw in the movie theater. And the end of every cartoon was. Eve, 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 that. 
Mr. Toastmaster.